you know, it's Eddie from Dawa Made in Ed. So today we're gonna do something a little bit more laid back, simple, and just show you guys what to do when you receive your recorder. So again, bench test. That is the first thing you need to do. So today I'm gonna show you what you get in an XVR box. We're gonna assemble it, show you how to assemble it, and get it powered up. And then we are going to just do a couple of the settings from power up. We're not going to put any cameras or anything to it. So let's get started. So in your box, you will get your recorder. You will get a mouse. You'll get your power supply. You'll get your power cable and data cable. You'll get four little screws for your hard drive. You'll get a little document that shows you how to assemble everything and you will get a little user manual guide with your recorder. Now obviously some of the things that are missing is the hard drive so that's all depending on your supplier that you use or where you purchase your device from, how many cameras you'll have connected to your device depending on how big your hard drive needs to be. Today I'm just going to use a normal one terabyte hard drive and my little handy little tool set that we use all over in our offices to open our products and we are going to assemble this get it powered on and show you exactly how everything gets done so let's get started get a nice little so we're just going to use a little star screwdriver here so everything is pretty much just a phillips head we will open it up. There are four little screws on the back of the recorder so that we can get the top shell off. This one has two additional screws here. Okay, so six screws in total. All right. So this will be the inside. So you've got your board. We're going to connect the power cable and data cable to these two pins here. I'll show you exactly where and how to do that. So we're going to get our four little screws open for our hard drive. We're going to get that assembled and in. So let's get that off to the side there. And then let's get our hard drive in first. So hard drive, your hard drive will sit like that and at the back you'll see there are four holes exactly where your hard drive needs to get mounted up. So we're going to start off by putting in one first just to line everything up. And then once you've tightened that one down then you can pretty much align everything where exactly you want them to be so that they're all nice and straight so i know as an installer a lot of people that i used to deal with always used to say why put four and not just two because two can hold it in pretty much just fine the thing is after a while with these recorders as they get older if there's no servicing being done or anything like that there could be a little bit of a vibration from the little fan on the side here or even from the hard drive over age sticking and things like that so it's just best to have all four screws nice tightly secured in place to hold the hard drive in exactly how it needs to be into the recorder and you are getting the, the screws with it so might as well just use all of them okay so our hard drive is in nice and secure now now what we're going to do is we are going to plug in our cables so what we're going to do is you'll see there's a little clip on the front that clip needs to go over the back end because it clips over onto it we're going to go there and you push hard till it hear the clip and then what we're going to do is our SATA cable the data cable you'll see on the data cable there is a little notch that's got it almost looks like an L if you turn it to the side it almost looks like an L so what you're going to do is you'll, you'll see your cable has the exact same feature to it so you kind of 
can't misalign them. Um, but if you're not sure, just double check it the way it needs to go in. And you're going to push it down until you hear the clip as well. There we go. So that's all in. So you'll see there are two different sizes. So they can only go in one way. So if you look at your hard drive, your hard drive has the same two sizes. One for power, one for data. So I'm going to do the power first and then I'm going to do data second. So we're going to do power. And then we're going to do data. There we go. So that's basically what it will look like once you are done. So you can do a little bit of cable tidying, um, maybe using some cable ties or cable clips to just maybe bring them down a little bit so that they sit nicely and not up. Um, at this point, we're not going to focus on that just too much. We're just going to get the unit powered on and set up. So I'm going to put the shell back on and we are going to get this device powered on and set up and show you guys how that is done. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are now going to plug in all our cables. We've got our power cable, HDMI cable for our screen and our mouse. So for our mouse with the USB, we are going to plug it into the back here. We've got two dedicated USB ports, one at the back and one will be allocated at the front. So generally we would try and use the one at the back to keep the front open if you need to download some footage. So we are going to get everything plugged in. So we've got our mouse, we're going to plug that in. We've got our power, which would go in right next to the mouse here. And then we are going to plug in our HDMI cable, which is for our screen. And that would go right there. And then you've got your internet um, cable. You've got a, another screen. If your screen doesn't support HDMI, that you can use VGA. Um, so that would be for that. And then you've got your alarm inputs as well on the back of this unit and some audio ports. So for today, obviously, we're just going to focus on the three main ones, which is your display, your USB for your mouse, and the power for the recorder. And once that's all in, we can then go switch our recorder on and wait for it to power on. And we should get our display in the next couple of seconds. And we're going to get our HDMI cable in. So the device does take HDMI or VGA. Um, so today we're just going to use normal HDMI cable to get this device on. And then let me just get some power to the device. And then we can get started with that. Get the device on and set up. Okay, so now that we've got the device powered on, we are going to set it up quickly. So what I've done was I've already initialized the device. So we're going to get that all set up and we are going to show you what to look out for if you want to get it connected to your network um, and just get the system online. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that I think is quite nice, especially for being an end user or a new technical um, installer. Just some quick ways of things to get your system online. Um, it doesn't work um, all the time, but it does work 90% of the time, purely because majority of the ISPs out there do block their, um, their routers uh, ports so that some of these devices can't go online up until you phone your ISP and ask them to unlock those ports for you. So we're going to take a look. We're just waiting for that. So there we go. So we're going to go in. We're going to just type in. I just use the password admin123. We're going to go OK. Now we're in the system. So once you've got the whole thing set up, first, a couple of things to look at. Um, for me, that plays a big role is your date and time settings. You want to make sure it says day, month, year. You can have it year, month, day or month, day, year. We prefer day, month, year. We prefer the DST to be enabled and set to week. You're going to have it on March. It's going to be on last. It's going to be on Sunday, 0100. And end time will be October on last Sunday, 0200. 
once you've got that in place and you make sure that your time is um, set to the correct region and your time is everything up to date you're then going to go apply and save so once you've done that you right click you're going to go back out so now the main thing for me is on network so ours still says the factory 192.168.1.108 which is your default on any of our recorders and cameras um, so what I like to do is I like to put my DHCP on and you're going to go to modify at the top and majority of the time your DHCP will be off and this will be able to be edited from yourself. So what you would like to do is put it on DHCP, connect your internet cable to the back, connect it to your router, reboot the device so that the, the device can take in the network information from your recorder. So the, the one might change to a zero. The, um, by the default gateway where it says 192.168.1, that could go to 254. So it all depends on your ISP, the way their network is set out. And this recorder will then configure itself to your network to go online. Once all that's done, so our, our device is currently not connected to a network. Um, so once that's all done and your device is all sorted and you boot back up, you're going to go to P2P and the status here, um, you want the status to say online. And then once it's online, you scan this QR code after downloading the DMSS app and you scan that, you put in your information that you've entered, which is your username and password. It's the same information that you use to log into the device. And once you've put that in and you go OK, and a couple of seconds later, you'll have your live view on your recorder and on your phone. And that will be it for the XVR. If you'd like to see more videos, please like, subscribe, and put the bell notification on for more awesome videos we are going to do another one and the link will be in the description for how to set up an nvr which is slightly different in platform even though majority of the things do look the same um, if you would like to see that please look in the link in the description and you can then take a look at that video and see if that would make any difference on helping you and getting your system all set up in the correct way hope you have an awesome day thank you